Dawn, and I would like to welcome you to my channel. joining me I want to show you how I care for my fiddle leaf figs I know a lot of people ask me how do I keep them a alive and be healthy they're really fussy if you move them or do anything too dramatic they, they just freak out and lose their leaves but I've successfully kept a few alive and I'll just show you how I do it if you have any other suggestions I'm always all ears would love to hear how you do it as well First, I'm going to um, lay out some newspaper because it's pretty dirty, which it's kind of fun as an adult to be dirty. So I'm gonna lay out some newspaper on my counter just to catch some dirt. I would normally do this outside, but it is really cold. I think it was 12 degrees when I woke up this morning, so that's not an option for me. I'm new to the area and new to the cold, so to me that's really cold. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I am stepping both of these plants up a size. They both, the roots are just needing a little more room to grow. This little guy was really little and he fit under my countertop when I moved here. As you can see now, that's a problem. He's kind of getting smushed. So it's a perfect time because this pot I'll show you. This plant is kind of becoming my Jack and the Beanstalk. I feel like it, it's going straight up. It needs to probably move to the floor. Um, it's blocking my view outside to the window, so I think it needs to go to the floor. But also, look how small the little pot was. You can tell that obviously when I got it, it was a much smaller little guy. So this needs a lot more room. Um, so we're gonna put this one into this pot and then into this, or this planter, and then into this pot. So he's gonna move on up, and then this one will take this pot on, because this is much bigger and will allow a lot more room for that plant. So let's get started. First, I'm gonna take this out. I made sure, um, this is a real good hint, I made sure not to water it. So Monday is my watering day, today is Sunday. So I, it's good because if it's too moist, it just kind of crumbles and falls apart and won't stay really well when you go to transplant it. We'll get them all comfortable, resituated, water them a little bit, and then in a week, you can do a little bit of like a gentle fertilizer or just kind of take care. But he's, they're just so picky, you have to be very careful. Okay, so I'm gonna put on some rubber gloves. You can certainly use a hand shovel. If I was outside, I probably would, but this isn't a really big project and I kind of like to get in, especially being a fragile plant and kind of just gently put the dirt around the plant. So I'm just gonna kind of gently squeeze it a little bit and set them aside. I am going to um, also show you how to clean the leaves. I think that's really important. If they get too dusty, and they do, no matter you know how clean you keep your house, they get a little bit dusty and dull. And when they do that, they don't photosynthesize as well and get the nutrients they need to be really green. So I'm going to show you how to clean it the way I do it. There are several ways. If it was summer, you could take it out, hose it down, bring it back, but it's not. So I like to be really gentle. I'll show you two ways after I repot. So I'm gonna grab the new pot and I'm gonna grab my potting mix. I just grabbed a really good kind of um, blend of potting soil. Again, you wanna use pretty good stuff in these because they are a little finicky. And I'm just gonna cut it open. And I'm gonna pour, I'm gonna figure out first where I want this. I know I need a few inches of dirt for growth and just to make them cozy. I like to keep um, the leaves close to the top. I don't wanna bury them because if they don't get enough light, they'll just kind of fade away and just not do well. So I'm gonna try to aim for there. That means I need probably four or five inches of the potting soil first. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the potting soil in. Oh, it's so good, it has all the little um, nutrients and nothing like fresh dirt. So now I have, I'll show you about how much dirt I have and it's just trial and error. It's so light because it's fresh dirt that I have that much potting soil. Probably shouldn't call it dirt. It's really potting soil. It deserves the right name. And then I'm going to pull this out and just kind of loosen it a little bit. And like I said, it's pretty good time to do it because it's almost at that weak point. I um, have on my calendar to water my fiddle things weekly. So it's Monday for me. So I'm gonna just 
Oh yeah, his roots are really attached. Poor guy, he doesn't want to come out. That shows you that how much he needs some room. So I'm gonna gently just, gently massage the edges ever so gently. I don't wanna go really rough. You know, when I garden in the spring, and put flowers in, you can rough them up a little bit, but fill figs are just so fragile. The bottom leaves are just a dot too low for me. So I have about this much room um, till this. So start, so I'm gonna just place them here. I'm gonna add just another inch or so, maybe an inch or two. I have plenty of room. I'm not risking the top roots being too high. And I'm just gonna put them in, try to nest them in a little bit. Oh, his roots just wanna grab hold. That's great. I think to me, that's just what I was looking for, that height. So now I'm gonna just fill in, and I'm gonna do it by hand. Again, you can use a shovel. I just think with little spaces, I sometimes prefer to just use my hands and get in there and tuck in the dirt where I want it to be. So I'm just gonna grab little handfuls and just start putting them around. You know, um, when I moved, I had to give up a couple fiddle leaf fig trees that I cared for and I loved, and one especially was really thriving. And it was so sad, but I did say, you know what, I'm gonna take my two plants with me. So I put them in the car in the back seat with my dogs <laughs> when we drove a long distance drive. And um, we had to stay in a hotel for a couple weeks while we're waiting to get into this house. And I took them into the hotel, into the lobby, into our room, and I put them on the one little windowsill we had, and I babied them. So this really, I really want to keep them alive because they've been through a lot, and I really um, nurtured them. And anyway, they come along with us. It is interesting, and if any of you have any suggestions, being in such a different climate, it's interesting to see um, how they will do. I did try putting one by a window and it did not like it. What's good about this bigger pot, really moving to a larger pot or planter, is that um, I had quite a bit of room to give it a lot of new soil um, and nutrients above where it was before. It was really struggling. Uh, and you know, these plants are not inexpensive as I'm sure you know. So when you get one, you really, <laughs> kind of cross your fingers and hope they live. You really want to take care of them because, well, first of all, it's alive, it's a live creature, but we don't want them um, to die quickly. It's just a fair investment. And they are so beautiful. I love the extra green they add to the house. Just, I love having live plants. I don't have a ton of them, um, but I have enough that are, I feel like, manageable for me to really care for. And then they just add a little sense of green and life to the room. Now that I have it in its little planter, I'm not going to um, fuss it with a lot more. They are, he's just happy the way he is. So I'm going to pop him in here. And I did measure um, to make sure that, again, he sits up high enough, that it, it, your light will get to these bottom leaves. So this was a great fit. It took a little bit of measuring the shapes and figuring that out. But they're available. So I'm going to pop him in here and just center it a little bit. It looks more appropriate. It doesn't look so jack in the beanstalk as it did in this size. So I think this is great. Okay, now I'm gonna move on to what was the littlest plant, still is littler, and I'm gonna repurpose this pot that the larger fiddle leaf fig was in. And as you can see, I actually, this is a great little hack, I just popped in a white ceramic bowl and I had turned it upside down to elevate it a little bit. Again, that was to get some you know, elevation for these bottom leaves to see some daylight. All right, so I'm gonna pop him out. He, 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 this one wants to come right out of the container. That won't be a problem to repot. This one will just save for some other day for another plant. Okay, so I think this will be really pretty in this new white pot. If I set it all the way down, I would have that problem again where just a lot of, of the fiddle leaf figs are being um, hidden and won't get any light. So I'm gonna still use my little bump up elevation with this. Um, so I happen to have just another liner available and he's bigger so I'm just gonna transplant that, take him out, he was willing to come out of that. And I'm gonna set him aside, add some dirt um, to this, some potting soil. And I don't need a whole bunch because it's not as big of a change as the other one was. He didn't need as much. He wasn't as squished. 
So I'm gonna take this, again, just gently, gently massage just a little bit, just to get them going a little, and try that. There we go, that's actually a really great fit. And again, the reason I'm doing this two-step process and putting them in a liner is this pot just doesn't have drainage holes. You can see it's a ceramic, it's really pretty, but it doesn't have drainage, which is actually really good because I probably will have this on marble and or the floor, and I don't want that drainage. So it's not an outdoor, it's more of an indoor pot. So this will let it drain a little bit. Again, I'll have a little bit of elevation. It can drain a little bit. There'll be plenty of soil to absorb, but you really want the um, fiddle leaf figs to have some ability to drain and not be stagnant in water. They don't like that. They're very picky. So I'm gonna put my little elevation down here. I'll show that to you. Very simple. You could use anything. You could use Tupperware, anything you have. I don't really need to fill the rest of the pot because um, it's self-contained. So I'm just gonna place the little fiddly fig there. And it's pretty good fit. It is a teeny bit high. I could go searching through my cabinets, but I actually am pretty pleased with the height. I like the elevation of the leaves getting um, ability to grow further. And again, I'm new to this cooler region. So if any of you have fiddly figs that you care for and um, have any ideas that work for you in a cooler region, if you could comment below, that would be great. If you subscribe, I could always do a follow-up video and we could discuss a few more tips and um, tricks of the trade. Okay, now that they're in their new little homes and they're very fussy, so I'm gonna water them and give them um, a drink. It's about time and they have all this new dirt, so I'm gonna just try to get a little bit of water. I have some um, water in this little pitcher and I'm just gonna baby it. Pour a little bit in and twist them around. You can twist it from the inside, actually. A little bit of water. I don't want to flood it with water. Again, you don't want to overwater fiddle leaf figs, but it does need um, a bit of water after being shocked and changed in a new home, put into a new home. Okay, so he has a little bit of water. I'm gonna just check to see the initial drainage, um, how much came through. So since it's pretty good, I'm gonna let it sit here for a while while I clean up and then I'm going to show you how to clean the leaves and by that time I'll be able to see if the water is pretty good and we're ready to put it in its new home. So let me just clean up here real quickly. Pop this over here. I'm just going to throw that away and then gather up this excess So this is why the newspaper is so handy. I'll have a little bit of cleanup, but imagine if I didn't lay this down first. If you have a plastic tablecloth, like a picnic tablecloth, or something else that, else that works, that's great too. You can just pull it up and dump it. Let me throw this away real quickly. Trash. And then this will be an easy, quick cleanup. Not a big deal. Pretty good all in all. And because it wasn't wet dirt, it's really easy to clean up. So again, if it were summer, I would certainly be able to put these out on my back patio and give them a nice little misting or spray down with the hose. I do kind of worry about breaking them again. They're a, a spendier plant and I just really like it since they're alive to keep them alive. They've really been nurtured. So I like to care for them a little bit more tenderly and it's winter anyway, so I couldn't be outside. So one method is to gently mist your leaves and then wipe them clean. The other thing I do, especially with my trees I used to have that were quite substantial leaves. I mean, these, the leaves were the size of my head at least. So I would hold it and gently clean it with a very soft cloth and go back and dry it. So it takes a lot of, um, you really have to have a few minutes to spend on this. It has to be something that you enjoy doing. So for the cleaning cloths, I actually make these out of my husband's old t-shirts. I use them for so many things around the house, you wouldn't believe it, from cleaning my plants to uh, polishing silver and brass. I also keep little ones all over the house to clean my reading glasses or sunglasses. Actually, maybe I'll do a follow-up video to show you how I make these uh, because they are so, so useful. And I can show you how to utilize almost the entire shirt and make different sizes. And I make different sizes for different tasks, a larger one for dusting, and so on and so forth. So I'll do a little follow-up video on that. So as I mentioned, there are two indoor ways to clean your fiddle leaf figs. 
I prefer, prefer one of the two methods, primarily because my leaves were just so big on the trees, but let me show you both. One is um, to use a really fine mister. I find uh, the softest, gentlest mister, you don't want one that comes out um, in a heavy stream, and then you can just take the leaf and you hold it ever so gently, and I'm just gonna give it a nice little shower. A little mist. And then I'm gonna take one of my handy dandy cloths. I think for this, I'm gonna use about this size, doesn't really matter. I just like to be able to fold it over and really have it in my palm of my hand. So for a mister bottle, I found that I really liked the fine mist of this cleaning product bottle. So when I was through using the product, I cleaned it very, very well. I made sure that all the product was flushed out of it, cleaned, and then I repurposed this for my plants. Um, no need to go buy a new bottle, reuse it. It's you know recyclable. I think it's just a really great way to reuse a bottle. And again, you might have a different product that you just find it's a really fine mist. Some are so aggressive. I'm just feeling like it would just be a little rough on these leaves. So I'm gonna give it a little mist, a little shower. And then I'm going to take one of my handy dandy little t-shirt cloths and just fold it over. And then I'm gonna just gently rub it. It's just getting a little bit of a dusty. And you, I do find that if I hold the back, I don't crack the leaves. And if your leaves are cracking, it's probably a sign that it's not getting quite enough water. I have cleaned one of the leaves. You can really see the difference of where it started. It's just dull from the dust. And now it has a little bit of a greener look, a little bit more of a sheen to it. And I think it's just so much prettier and it looks healthier. I don't know if there's really a magic month or week number. I just go by look. When mine starts looking a little dull and um, not super healthy, as far as the brightness of it, um, I know it's time to clean. So obviously this was a little flatter, dustier, and now that it's clean, it's a little deeper green, a little brighter, and it has its shine back why I love these t-shirt cloths. Not only do they not leave a lint, but they are so soft. So I can even put my finger in there and go to the back part of the leaf, which I feel like often gets missed in cleaning the plants because it's, it's hard to get a bigger cloth back there if it's not very small and very flexible. So I just find that they're really great for a fragile leaf. And like I said before, there are a couple ways to clean the leaves. If you are cleaning in place, for instance, if I went into my living room and I didn't really maybe want to mist around furniture or different things, you can certainly get your cloth wet, go in with a gentle wet cloth already and just clean it that way. You don't have to mist it. You can just go in with your cloth and as you can tell, it works great. I would keep a few handy because as they get dirty, you want to rotate them. I've, I've cleaned two or three leaves and this still looks great. So this little, size is working great. I think for a bigger tree, you might want to mist. Uh, depends on how much time you have and how much you want to baby your plant and where you're uh, cleaning the leaves. But I think for this, I'm going to just go ahead and mist. I'm in my kitchen and clean the rest of the leaves. see them potted I actually changed my mind I think instead of um, putting this one on the marble I'm gonna put it in my family room on the coffee table it's just kind of the right size and this guy I feel like the size he ended up being would be actually really pretty on um, the wood tone color of my counter in my office so I'm gonna put this one in my kitchen office
Thanks for watching this video. I hope you found it useful. If so, please like and subscribe to my channel for more videos like this in the future. See you soon.